Hello and welcome to the Eureka Masterclass with me, Bren Hamill. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about Google AdWords account structure. It's very, very important. I want to show you one account that we're managing that's doing about 40,000 US dollars a month. And I want to show you how you can set up your own Google AdWords account very, very quickly, very, very easily. That'll allow you to have ease of management, but most importantly, provide you with a fantastic return on investment with giving you hordes of new customers or sales depending upon the business model that you're in. So without any further ado, I'm gonna jump over to my computer and show you everything in today's episode. So here I am back at my computer. Heaps of people always saying to me that Google AdWords is far too expensive and I can't get it to work and it costs too much, etc., etc. It's a little bit of load of hogwash in a way because I see so many Google AdWords campaigns that are producing fantastic return investments. They're bringing in such a cheap cost per new customer and they're just extremely profitable. So it's it's a little bit in uh, the science and the art of setting up the account, managing the account, and also the back-end marketing that provides the fantastic return on investment for Google AdWords. But without, without doubt, the biggest problem is account structure. And that's what I want to talk to you about. So here you can see a client that we that we work with and have been done uh, have been doing for a couple of years, and they're spending uh, almost forty thousand dollars every month. Fantastic conversion rate. Now that's that changes, of course, but they're doing about four and a half thousand leads per month using Google AdWords, and they spend a dollar, and they roughly get around about six and a half dollars back. So. It's a no-brainer, Google AdWords. They they want to spend more money on Google AdWords, and why wouldn't you? You put a dollar in, you get six and a half dollars back. You just you're just trying to keep uh, spending that one dollar as much as you can. So how how does one account get to this point? It's with good account structure and good management, and I want to talk to you about that today. So if you've had any experience with Google AdWords, you would understand a little bit how the account structure works. It's account, campaign, ad group ads and keywords. Now you're probably thinking, that's a little bit different. It's generally ad group, keywords, then ads. I like to look at it that ads are further up the chain or they're more important than the keywords because the ads determine what keywords should go into an ad group. You want your ads to be as relevant as they can be to the keyword that you're bidding for. So if you've got a widget and you've got another widget that, and they're very similar, but they've got some subtle differences. That one could be waterproof, one might not be waterproof, one could be red, one could be blue. You don't want to be showing a generic ad to a red keyword. You want to be showing a red-based ad to a red-based keyword. So a better example of that would be, imagine we're selling Nike shoes. And if we were to just have shoes as our keyword phrase, Generally speaking, that one word keyword phrases aren't particularly good. They're they're called a head-based keyword and they're too broad. You could be talking about all different types of shoes. Nike shoes, yes, we've got a good keyword there. Red Nike shoes, well, it's slightly different to Nike Nike shoes. Red Nike shoes, Nike shoes, slightly different. The, The Nike shoes is generic, but the red Nike shoes, we've got a level of specificity there. We could show a relevant ad to that specific keyword phrase. And we'd also, within this ad group, we, we would want to put red as a negative because we don't want anything associated with the word red, Nike shoes, showing up for an ad that this keyword would produce. Then we've got like Nike running shoes. Again, its own specific ad group that should have. And then obviously moving down and just an example, we've got sandals. Again, it's a head-based keyword phrase and we, we don't really want to be running with that one as well. So there's tons of different potential keyword groupings that should have their own ad groups. You've got direct keywords that could be key products, names or brands. You've got symptom keywords. You've got problem keywords, part numbers. And then you've got to think about the buying cycle as well. Are, are you talking about information? Is, is it, are people in the awareness and interest stage? Are people in the learning stage? Are people in the, or the shop or the buy stage? So you definitely say that people are looking up part numbers and using direct keywords such as a brand or a specific product name, they're definitely in the, the shop buy or at the end of a learn uh, buying cycle phase. And then you've got like product types and service types. All these types of different uh, thoughts around keyword structure and ad group structure are very, very important because how are you going to lay out your different campaigns and different ad groups? It's very, very, very important that you make sure that all the keyword research that you do do You've, you've broken them down into what type of keyword they are, 
Can they be expanded? Can they be more granular? Can they be more specific? So you can show the most specific ad as, po uh, as you possibly can to the keyword that you'd like to bid for. I know that sounds all convoluted in some respects, but the more specific you can be and the more planning you put into this part of the process, the more money you'll make down the track by an absolute country mile. So as a little bit of a breakdown further on again, we've got Nike shoes and we've got Nike running shoes, two different ad groups. Now the ads will be specific to the keyword phrase that's just above it. And then the keywords that we have are Nike shoes, we're using broad match and then we'd use the broad match here, Nike running shoes, but we would put the negative keyword of running into this ad group because we don't want any Nike running shoe uh, ads being triggered for that keyword phrase from this ad group. This ad group, Nike running shoes, is much more specific to anything that's Nike running shoe based as a search query. So we want these two ads that are much more specific to show for those running keywords and vice versa. Someone that types in Nike shoes here, it's so generic, we're not quite sure what they want. They're at the, the really early awareness stage quite possibly. So we, we don't want to be too targeted with the ads, perhaps. So I haven't spoke too much about the keyword match types and there, there's, there's a whole bunch of them. So I, I don't really want to talk, to talk talk to you about the keyword match types in this video because that's definitely a video for another day. But as, a, as an overall account structure and looking at it, how you could how you should be structuring the keyword phrases is that you'd have your account campaign. So this would be kind of like a Nike shoe campaign here. And then we would have Nike red shoes and then possibly Nike running shoes. And then within the keyword selections, we could be using modified broad match, we could be using phrase match and exact match. And the way we want to tier the bid amounts is definitely the most important and most specific one and therefore should get the best return on investment should be exact match. So you might be bidding a dollar and then you might be bidding 85 cents for phrase and then you might be bidding 80 cents or 75 cents for modified broad as you get less specific to the to the uh, actual keyword, meaning that modified broad match that you have many more variations that could show uh, or that you're bidding for in that, in that type of keyword. So your ads could show for a whole wide range of different keywords in that one ad group. That means that you, you kind of want to stagger the bids because as you get less relevant, the return on investment can decrease. So therefore you don't want to bid as much because the conversion rate probably will be lower. So that that's this is a fantastic way to, st to structure your ad group. So exact match, and these are all in the same. So you generally three keyword phrases in each ad group all relating to each other. So that it could be red Nike shoes, exact match, red Nike shoes, phrase match, red Nike shoes, modified broad match. And then as you get the search query data, you might find that modified broad match is providing you with a, a you're, you're bidding for a keyword phrase or you're showing up for a keyword phrase within the, search, uh, the Google search results for a red based Nike shoe phrase that you didn't quite think about but deserves its own ad group. Again, you can create a third ad group and it could be something more specific that you found in this ad group from the search term query data. Then what you would do is that you would find, you'd find the uh, identifier that's unique to this third ad group keyword that you found from this top ad group one and you'd make sure that the negative is here so this ad group can, can no longer show an ad for that, making that this ad group being more specific, therefore it's resonating better. So you, the ad is more specific to the keyword phrase that you've just found. Again, you'll get a better return on investment. Yes, it's a little bit more work, but the level of granularity be, in terms of you being able to be more specific with the ad that is shown to the keyword gets you more bang for your buck and it's more bang for your time too and it does get easier further down the track and i'll show you why that is the case as a little bit later on in this video so just one more example just to nail this kind of structure home is that we might be we might be having some keywords here so uh, newcastle plumbing plumbing services so we might have this ad here 
John's Plumbing Service, servicing the Newcastle area, call for an appointment today. And, but that's, these keywords aren't relevant or, or, or they're not, they're somewhat relevant, but they're not the exact same as emergency plumber, uh, plumbing. It's a kind of different service in some respects and people uh, are, are going to perceive it as differently. So for emergency based keywords, we could have an ad such as emergency plumbing service, call 24 seven immediate assistance. We work, work, uh, we work weekends. That ad is much more relevant to this to a set of two keywords, therefore we'll have a better click-through rate, better quality score, you get cheaper, uh, you get a cheaper cost per click, and you'll get a, uh, an improved return on investment or an improved conversion rate because the ad is matching the, the keyword phrase. So then, again, we could have like work weekends, emergency, but if someone's saying like Saturday plumbing or weekend plumbing, again, we could have an ad, weekend plumbing services, don't pay high weekend rates. We work all day, every day that ad meets those two keywords much more specifically. So I feel like I've kind of hit this account structure in many different angles, and this is probably the best way for you to understand it. And hopefully that breaks it down. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us here or contact myself and I'll have a chat to you about how you can structure your AdWords accounts a little bit better. So from an ease of management perspective, this kind of large account structure that it's perceived as hard work, but it, it, it's very, very easy. It does take a little bit of time, but it, it's quite simple when you think about it, how to structure. It provides a far better way and a far easier way to manage post launch of the, the Google AdWords campaign. Because if you start to look at things as at an ad group and keyword level, so for instance, you might have an ad group and a set of keywords that have a 2% CTR, but a low conversion rate. You may want to delete or modify that that ad or that landing page. So keyword two is performing quite well. It's a it's an okay CTR, uh, decent conversion rate. We might let that one go, or we might go into the search terms and see if we can expand that one a little bit. Keyword three, now great ret uh, great conversion rate, terrible com click through rate. We might want to work on the ads on how can we get more attention to our ads. What kind of headlines or uh, descriptive text can we include or Add extensions can we include to improve to boost our CTR because we're getting a, fant a fantastic conversion rate. Now, keyword four is very similar to keyword two, fantastic CTR uh, and a great conversion rate. We might leave that one alone. Now, keyword five is is the champion group. We may we may want to get in there and, and expand that one and become more specific. So, get into the search term uh, area. What kind of keywords are driving the the most conversions? Can we create their own ad group for those particular keywords that are driving home that fantastic conversion rate. Again, adding that level of granularity, which will give us more relevancy, a better click-through rate, higher conversion rates, better quality scores, and ultimately more money in your own pocket. So this concludes the Eureka Masterclass for today. I hope you've had a fantastic time and you've learned a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to email us here at Eureka Search Engine Marketing. If you just want to chew the fat about your Google AdWords campaign, feel free to send me an email. I'm always happy to, to, uh, to, to, to talk to anyone about Google AdWords or anything or, or digital marketing. I learn just as much from you as hopefully you guys learn from me. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like, out, like us on Facebook and tune in once a week for the, the free Eureka Masterclass. Have a great day, guys.